Hey, Facebook, how you doing? Pastor Gerald, Victory Outreach, Rancho Cordova. I'm down here in San Jose. Amen. We had to come back down here. We had a great meeting yesterday. The regional pastor, Pastor Charlie, and uh, a lot of, uh, you know, just my fellow brothers in arms, uh, some of the pastors from our region. Great meeting, a lot of brainstorming. Uh, one of the things I really enjoyed was some of the, a lot of the stuff we talked about were a lot of things that the Lord had pressed on my heart a couple years ago and we began to uh, build leaders. It was about leadership. We began to build leaders in a particular fashion and uh, we we'll continue to do that. This Monday we have an actual uh, leadership training and uh, just to let you know that the type of leadership, type of things we're trying to do is there's different layers of leadership. We all know that. And uh, those layers are dependent upon the capacity of the leader. Now, there are leaders that are able to, uh, you know, initiate, if, you, if I could say that, initiate certain things uh, that the local pastor or regional or even international, our founders, uh, vision has. You know, we always need people that can help build and uh, take the steps necessary to achieve the goal at hand. Amen. Pastor Charlie said something very interesting as well. He talked about the difference between a worker and a leader. And, uh, you know, that really hit home because there are a lot of people. You're going to have both in the church. But then, you know, my mind starts going once one of our leaders dropped one of those things. I got bombs blowing off in my head, man. And uh, I knew right then that he just gave me a word that can help uh, not only help our church, uh, but any church, anybody in the kingdom. I mean, uh, it, the, the thing is, we as the pastors and leaders, our, our, our wives, the, the women that are close under our wives and the men that are close under the pastor and then the pastors, the pastors, it's pastoral, not pastoral, it's pastoral, uh, the pastoral team, have to be able to help us build out to that goal we're trying to achieve. And so the layers, like I said, of leadership uh, on the human side are dependent upon the capacity. The comprehension is very important. I, I think because when you don't have a scripture that people can relate to, they tend to put other things over it. But it was God himself in Proverbs 4, 7 that said, uh, wisdom is the principal thing. So get wisdom. You know what I mean? So he's saying, you know, so make sure you get wisdom because you can't give somebody an assignment, can't give somebody a leading role, and they lack wisdom for that level or that role. Uh, some people, you know, uh, end up against the barrier, and the barrier is just a lack of not having the wisdom for what's behind the barrier, right? And so I've been there a lot of times, and I will get there more. Uh, there's times where I had to push the barrier further down. I, I couldn't get past it, so I had to push it down further, which allowed me to grow as well. Now, growth comes uh, at accelerated rates, I found, depending on God, but also depending on the mind, the comprehension of the person, which means if you can see it, you can be it. Uh, he said, wisdom is the principal thing, so get wisdom, but, he said, in all you're getting, get understanding. See, that's the comprehension part, the how. You know what I mean? There's people that, you're just a worker if you're able to just, somebody tell you what to do and you go do it. But when you understand how, now you're in the position to be a leader because leaders know how to make things work. Now, we don't always get there right away. You know, they said that, uh, you know, the light bulb thing, it says that uh, uh, 10,000 times he worked on the light and uh, said he was defeated, but he said he just found 10,000 ways that uh, the light bulb didn't work, amen, which we know is a matter of perspective, so... But I thank God for the people I have there. We pioneered nine years ago in the living room with just a couple of people. And, you know, way back then, I looked down to today. And today I look way down unless the Lord returns. I see even greater things because Pastor Ed said something in a meeting one time with a bunch of us. He said, when you look at a church that's 30, 40, you know, or he said 20, 30, you know, years old, and they've gotten to a certain level, and then you look at a church that hasn't been around a while, and it seems like they got good leadership and they've multiplied. He says the system is working better in the church that hasn't been around that long, that got almost to where the church has been around a long time. And sometimes we overlook that. 
because you know we we we're like those things in the world that uh where they talk about how tenure you know I've been around a long time, so therefore I must know. But sometimes you've been around a long time, and the problem is being around and not in. And so uh, our founder, you know, we're 50 years old, and I, I can hear many times in the meetings, and even Pastor Charlie was talking about, we've got we to gotta find those leaders that uh, their commitment is not just committed workers, but committed leaders. Amen. Um, Basically, for me, I always tell them that I don't want them, me and Gail to be the uh, the only ones that create for our church. Amen. I mean, I don't mean we're going to do everything everybody says, but we certainly want you to keep the creative nature, you know. Um, and, we, you know, that's what our church does. I thank God for the people. Now, the commitment level uh, that everyone talks about, commitment We've got some very committed people, and I believe that's because they're starting to see what we see. Um, we all love Jesus, and we know we're committed to whatever he wants to do. Now, I'll give you a little snippet from Monday. It ain't going to be just a regular uh, training like, oh, I've been there, done that. You know, we're not trying to get recycled leaders, but people with renewed minds. Amen? Renewed minds. I will tell you this. A leader that has the supernatural power of God working through him, it's not going to be the same as somebody who's depending on their five senses. Amen. God gives a level. You see, Moses had some leaders that looked normal to everybody, but it said that the Lord had put a spirit inside of them of, uh, of you know, of craftsmanship or, or different things that, because God wanted to accomplish something. And sometimes we block what God wants to accomplish to accomplish our own personal goals and what we think we see. And so I've learned not to do that no more, man. So I, I just look forward to it. It's open to everyone, men, women, even out of town, if you want to come. This is different. I'm telling you, you got to know how to lead from the supernatural. And uh, I call it supernatural because it succeeds. It succeeds natural uh, ability and natural laws that our five senses are bound to. Now, I will say this. Think about this. Because some people say, well, you know, is it possible? It's very possible. It happens all the time. That's how we got to where we are. Just sometimes you can't tell people that. Because they don't understand that, so you got to bring them to your forum to see and ask questions, rather than you know go to theirs and you know try to answer questions that they have. You know, what I mean, it's just it works better this way. Uh, you know, they always talk about how an airplane. Uh, you know, many of us been on the tarmac, and we get in that plane, and for a while we're in the we're on the ground like everything else. Gravity, the law of gravity, holds us down, but then they get to a point where there can be a shift, and so the wings change. And now the wings give it the ability to defy the law that holds everybody else down called gravity. And the law of lift supersedes the law of gravity, and the plane's able to do something that man himself can't do. Come on, somebody. Even though man, watch this, man's in control of it, though. You know, everybody says God's in control, but God said let us make man in our image and likeness, but let them have dominion over the earth. So man's in control. So God didn't make this earth all jacked up. He gave it to us. And that's why Romans says the earth is looking for the sons of God to come out. They're looking for us to have the wisdom, the knowledge, and the comprehension, the understanding, you know, to make God's laws work on the earth. And there's a lot of people who don't understand that yet. So praise the Lord. We're going to raise up some leaders to understand that, that there is a supply of power that God gives, which is why Jesus said, I gave some to be apostles some to be prophets, some to be pastors, some to be evangelists, some to be teachers. All of them pull from the power reservoir of the Holy Spirit for a particular job. Amen. So when we understand that, that's where you start to see not just people that know how to add to the church, but you start to raise people that can help multiply the kingdom. Amen. Then church is filled. The kingdom is the primary thing. If we change it any other way, God don't say nothing, but we, when we die, we go before him. He'll say something. You know what I'm saying? So it's the primary thing. That's why he said, first seek the kingdom and all of his righteousness, and everything will be added unto you. Amen. If Jesus is going to build a church and Jesus is the king, then we've got to seek what the king wants. Amen. And our king gave our founder a vision many, many years ago, 1967. Here we are 50 years later. But we can't get away from what uh, initially he told our founders because... Uh, as years go by, I know as water gets further down the road, it picks up a lot of debris. Amen. So we got to go back 
uncover the wells of our forefathers, man, like the Bible talks about, and uh, let God have his way. And at the same time, too, a lot of people depart, and I don't want to blame people for leaving. We don't get a lot of people leaving our church and I'm, because I believe as long as people are looking through the windshield instead of rearview mirror, amen, then you ain't going to lose a lot of people. And uh, we've got to call people back. As a pastor, I humble myself. If somebody wants to come back, then I'm open, man. I mean, I ain't holding no fault against them. I want them holding no fault against me. We got If the Lord is coming back and we're in the last days, we're in the last hour of the last days. We're in these very last hours before the return of the Lord. We want to make sure we stay above reproach, not just in, you know, character, doing good, or looking good amongst people, but actually doing the will. Like Jesus said, not everybody who says, Lord, Lord, will enter into heaven, but only he who does the will of my Father. The will. Amen. When somebody dies, they read you what you need to do in order to have your inheritance. Only he who does the will. Not he who does a bunch of stuff in church or a bunch of stuff for the church or a bunch of stuff good so that everybody says, wow, Gerald ain't a dope fiend no more. It ain't, it ain't about that. That makes me shine. He said that he's my light to shine in my life. Amen. So your crown and my crown is built by doing his will. All right. I'll see you Monday leading from the supernatural. It's going to be good, man. I'm telling you. I hope to see you there. There ain't no cost. Amen. If you want to bring a love offering, bring that. But it's going to be good, and I hope to see you there. But you, it will multiply you. Amen. It will multiply you.